So probably like you, I've been saving my pennies to try to figure out where I'm going to put my money for my retirement or where I'm going to put just a little bit from an investment standpoint. And then I turn on the television and I watch the news, and the news is so horrible, I just don't know how to get through any of it. So we brought the experts here to help us. Eric Johnson, Dan Um, um and Johnson Associates. Tonight on Public Exposure, I'm Stan Emmert. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Ameriprise, tell us just a little bit about what you guys do that's different from others. The primary difference between other financial professionals is that we're a, a multidisciplinary team that works together and not just focusing on individuals that are trying to grow and accumulate assets, but for the three stages of uh, asset accumulation, in, income, mm -hmm. and also wealth transfer. We, we are pretty well-rounded in our approach of working with uh, individuals regardless of what stage of life they're at. So you guys have a team. Let's go to that first slide because uh, you say there's three stages of life, right, Eric? There's a growth mm -hmm. and accumulation of assets, retirement income and wealth preservation, and then health care, long-term ex expenses, and wealth transfer. That's correct. For, for most people, you, everybody goes through one of these, th well, all these three stages as long as they live long enough. But in terms of growth and accumulation, that's usually your phase when you're younger. You're just, you're gathering assets at this point. Mm -hmm. Typically, if you have a family, you also have some issues with college funding and so forth. But what you're trying to do is accumulate wealth for retirement. So do you guys method. deal with little guys like me, or do you just deal with giant corporations? We, we don't really deal with corporations or organizations, more individuals, individual households, and looking at their planning needs. Okay, so you look around the world to, to, to try to find where investments are that possibly could, could fit a client's we needs. We definitely believe in today's world you have to have a global perspective, yes. All right, well, let's go to The Economist then because, you know, I've never seen anything like this before. But here, let's go to the next click because The Economist, there's a quote. Here it says, Fitch, a credit rating agency, downgraded mm. Ireland. I've never heard about a country being downgraded before. Tell me about that. Just like corporations, governments also have credit ratings, whether it be a a sovereign foreign nation or a municipality. And in this particular case, one of the things that's interesting about Ireland being downgraded is they're the one, they're the one country that has actually followed an austerity path. In other words, what they... And that's bad? Um, according to Fitch, it is, yes. What, and Moody's actually downgraded them as well, so it's both. Um, but what they've done is they've cut their budget and raised taxes in order to really lessen their budget deficit. Unfortunately, what that's done is, in a weak economy, is it's harmed the economy dramatically, so it's had the effect of slowing their economic growth uh, almost to nothing, but also significantly raising the budget def deficit because the tax revenue is not coming in. So by following this path of austerity, they've actually made their situation worse. So I, I, what I was hearing was a situation from an economic standpoint, Dan. It sounded an awful lot like the United States. Are Fitch and Moody getting ready to downgrade the United States, too? Uh, probably not, because once the U.S. gets downgraded, then uh, it's going to cause more of a global panic in, in terms of credit. What, what, what credit rating really means is it's supposed to reflect the, uh, the, the obligation of whoever's uh, giving the, the, you know, the, the interest commitment, the payment, payment of interest, whoever's got that obligation is their credit worthiness. So when you downgrade a uh, government, you're basically saying that there's a chance that that government's going to default. And history has shown that uh, basically most developed countries, developing and developed countries are not likely to default. In preparation for this show, I found an incredibly interesting website that was from the United States government. It's uh, called recovery.gov, and, and we've got the website up on the screen. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, it's different places around the country where the government is making sure, at least they say, that uh, there are, s are some savings of money. Is, is that, I mean, is this a good thing that the government is doing? And not, not this website, but in terms of saving money, cutting taxes, raising taxes, what's the, what's the thing that should happen? Well, what, what's sort of interesting about this is there is going to be a stimulus package called the Recovery Act. Mm -hmm. And in the last two years, they've spent $600 billion. But what they've spent it on is pretty interesting, and it kind of shows in there. Forty percent of that's been on tax cuts. The biggest... Si you spent the stimulus on tax cuts? Correct. Okay. Correct. Right. I got you. It hasn't been spent on roads and so f infrastructure like, job, like it was sold. growth and so forth. Right. And then the next biggest portion of it was aid to state governments, state and local governments. And what you've actually seen is they've sort of staunched the problems 
but all of government in terms of employment in this last two years has actually lost 350,000 jobs in the government. 350,000 so, jobs just in government. Correct. Huh? So the aid to the, go to the state and local government was almost like putting a finger in a dike in a couple of holes, but of course there's mm -hmm. still water leaking. Okay, so Dan, all of a sudden you, you've turned from Dan to the, you've now become Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. You own the economy. You own the whole U.S. government. What would you do for the economy as the head of the United States government? So in my opinion, the strategy that's being taken right now is short-term job creation, indirectly short-term job creation, but I think really what you need to focus on, what is going to take to create sustainable growth and create new jobs because if you look at the, the primary fundamental issue is a lot of the jobs that have been cut are probably not coming back. So where do you cr how do you create new jobs? It's got to be uh, jobs that are sustainable and will not... Uh, okay, <coughs> I'm, I'm hearing that, but I'm, I'm hearing a, pop, uh, a politician. Now, mm -hmm. come on now, Uncle Sam. Uh, what we're looking for now is, is where, where are those jobs to be created? How can you create them? What's the government stimulus, if you will, sure. that the, can make the that happen? The debate goes back and forth, but in my opinion, it goes back to the small business owner. You have to give them an incentive to go out and take some risk and create additional jobs and generate additional business. And, and obviously, fundamentally, you just don't want to give loans to business owners without a strategy behind it. So maybe something along the lines of lining up business coaches to help uh, business owners uh, run the business better, maybe more efficiently, and also create additional uh, uh, business. But you know, there ought to be a ton of money out there. Mm -hmm. now, I mean, there really should. The Federal Reserve basically has a zero percent interest to banks. So banks right now can, you know, as long as they can borrow the money, they're, they're borrowing free money. That's correct. So how come, it's, how come the economy seems to still be in a pretty desperate strait? Well, what you have is sort of a hangover from 2008 and really going back from 2007, 6, 5, when you had very, very easy credit. Well, what the bank saw was this very easy credit was great while it lasted in terms of profits, but when it didn't, a lot of banks failed and a lot of even the big ones came very close to failing without government intervention would have failed. So they're understandably a little shy about lend lending easy money. So their credit standards are very high. They're high for small business, but they're also they're high for even mortgages. But shouldn't the government, if the, if the if the government's U.S. government's going to somehow give money into the Federal Reserve that's going to turn around and loan it at zero percent, shouldn't they say a condition of that is you've got to loan to small business to create jobs? In hindsight, that probably <coughs> would have been a, uh, a good. It thing wasn't to do. hindsight here, or with most people that I know, right. but still, right. hey. But in hindsight, once you implement a policy, uh, maybe there should be some action taken as, uh, to create an. An, an avenue for that money to then flow to the private sector. Well, there has been a, a private sector alternative, and this comes from, uh, surprisingly to me, Chase Bank. Can we go to the next slide? Because Chase has this, what they're calling the new way forward, and they're saying hire an employee and Chase Bank will lower your business line of credit interest rate. Has this worked? It's, it's a new program, so we're not sure if it's worked yet or no, not. From July. Right. Yeah. Right. It, there's, there's not enough data yet to really show if it's worked or not. It's an it's a excellent marketing campaign uh, meant to open new business checking accounts. But also, if it does give an incentive for a small business to hire somebody. They will get a better rate on their credit line. So it, the main purpose, though, of course, is to open new business checking accounts. Mm -hmm. Should the market be the one that drives that? Um, Should the market be the one that drives um, a lower interest rates and lending to small businesses. And I'm going to let you think about that while we take a break. We're very, very fortunate to have on Public Exposure Dan Um and Eric Johnson, who are expert financial advisors. Um, you can uh, go to, uh, well, let's go to the next slide because here's a phone number. If you have questions about your own personal investing, have all sorts of questions of, about retirement, things of that nature, just give them a call. They're going to answer the, the questions from a team. By the way, I also wanted to tell you that uh, SCAN, right here where you're watching this, is having its issues with regard to its you know, getting its equitable share of cable franchise fees in the new budget. If you believe that SCAN is something good that uh, the city of Seattle should keep uh, as coming from cable franchise fees, strongly encourage you to uh, just send an email to richard.conlon at seattle.gov. He's the president of the Seattle City Council. richard.conlon at seattle.gov. Okay.